Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will show you how to parse on Mythic Conclave. Now this was recorded this week and ended up being a rank 1, with now it being a rank 3. Before we actually look at the footage, let's take a look at the talents and trinkets and Ezrite traits. So for talents, super standard on holy build. Uh, you just take Epidemic because you can cleave onto the Raptors sometimes. Other than that, uh, Pestilence, I think there's way too much movement on this fight for Pestilence to be used properly. So even just because of that, you would just go into Epidemic. As right traits, I'm using Triple Fester Might, uh, Double Treasure's Covenant, one Magus. And this is after Magus was buffed, uh, well, fixed. So now it scales with Haste. Trinkets, I'm running the Mechator Trinket and a PvP Trinket. So as far as the strategy goes, the strategy that we use in this video is only done by a few guilds and is most likely not going to be the case for your guild just quite yet. So what we do is actually Bloodlust on pull and we burn down Gonk as fast as possible and then we burn down the second boss obviously as fast as possible. So this kind of pushes our timings to line up much better but this requires a very high damage output from the raid to be able to do the strategy. Uh, your strategy is most likely, you know, kill Gong without using any cooldowns um, and then finish him off right as you see the bird appear in the middle and then move on to the next boss and that forces a cooldown lineup. The issue with that is that it forces you to hold your cooldowns on pull. So you end up delaying your cooldowns a whole minute, which is a pretty big issue for Unholy since our cooldowns are a pretty short duration. So obviously with this strategy, it's, it's ideal for parsing. You can parse if you're using a different strategy, but it most likely has to be one where it doesn't force you to use uh, or to hold your cooldowns on pull. Um, so one thing to mention, I forgot to flask here, um, or I didn't have one because I just got summoned in for this boss. So I didn't have a flask for this boss, but I do pre-pot and I use army because we are using bloodlust on pull. And we just go in on gong here super hard. Um, one thing that you can do is AMS right before this first crawling hex comes in. As Unholy, I feel like uh, it's, it's, you can do it and it's going to be a damage gain, obviously. As Frost, you definitely want to do it because that's going to be during your Breath of Sindragosa. So I chose not to AMS there, uh, just to use it as a defensive whenever this next wins comes up. Uh, and I end up not getting the debuff, so it works out. Obviously, they're getting knocked away by the frog during Bloodlust was not ideal, so that's definitely a movement mistake on my part. Now here, you just want to dot up Raptors, and as a melee DPS, this is probably one of the worst fights to do. Um, it's by far my least favorite fight to do as a melee DPS, just because you have to be chasing Raptors, there's a bunch of mechanics that force you out of melee. Uh, like the crawling hex and then each every single boss has some sort of mechanic that forces you out of melee which is you know unlucky bad fight design for melee dps but here we just stay on kimball and nuke him down now i see the bird come up and i just run over i'm going to be using ams on each of these paku's rats just for the extra runic power and i am running spell eater so i end up mitigating a lot of the damage as you can see here, I have the debuff that prevents me from being healed, I AMS, and I take essentially no damage throughout that. So obviously my AMS gets used up, but my health pool doesn't really move. Um, so I had the debuff and I had the Paku's Wrath, but AMS just uh, mitigates so much of that. So here again we get Raptors. Now one thing that we tend to do is either kite the closest Raptor through melee, so then it can get cleaved down, or if it's not getting kited through melee, I usually just grip a raptor onto melee uh, just to allow us to cleave and make our lives a little bit easier. So instead of having to run around the room chasing these raptors down, uh, we can start off by just having one on melee. Now, if they don't die f fairly quick in your raid, if they kind of take a while to, to be killed, they can grip it onto melee and then drop your DND and cleave onto it. If it dies in like two or three seconds, I usually don't bother dropping DND. Um, I just use up those epidemics as soon as I grip it in. And then even if the targets are spread, if you have at least three targets dotted, uh, it's much better to epidemic than to death coil. If you have two targets dotted and they're spread, 
then it's about equal damage so it doesn't matter if you death coil or you epidemic but obviously with epidemic you are helping kill those raptors so on this boss um there's a few things you can do with akunda so he obviously does the circle that forces you out of melee now you can either ams and stay in melee and you will not get stunned or you can icebound 42 and stay in melee and obviously you won't get stunned so if you have either of those, I definitely recommend using it um, if you're going for parse. If you're progging this fight, just you know, be a good player, move out of melee, don't get hit. But if you're going for a ranking, then you definitely should just use a defensive and stand in that circle. Because it is quite a long cast uh, to, be, to be spent out of melee. On this last boss, not much happening. I use my last set of cooldowns um, and then hopefully the boss dies pretty quick here. Again, I AMS on the storm. Um, a few other tips I can give you, if you get the Tiger Pounce on you, the one that stuns you and leaves a bleed, you can IBF that. Or if you happen to be a Blood Elf Horde, then you get uh, turned into a human, uh, which gives you every man for himself. You can also use that to break inst the stun instantly whenever the Tiger leaps onto you. But other than that, AMS usually for Paku's Rat. Or AMS Akunda Circle. Icebound Fortitude, the Kimball Pounce, or the Akunda Circle. And then AMS, obviously, you can pre AMS Crawling Hex in the first phase, but if you do this strategy, you only get one set of Crawling Hexes. Um, so that's, you know, not that relevant for most of the fight. And then Death Grip, you can use it on the Raptors, grip them into melee to make your life and every other melee's life a lot easier, since this is such a melee unfriendly boss. Um, but yeah, like I said, this ended up being a rank 1 and is currently, I checked right before recording this video, it's a rank 3 by a few hundred DPS. So I definitely didn't play perfect and I didn't have a flask. Um, main mistakes were getting knocked away by the frog in the first phase during Bloodlust. And I could have played my dot management on the raptors a little bit better. If a raptor is going to live through your dot, it is definitely good to dot it up. Um, if a raptor is at like 10%, I wouldn't waste a rune on it. So just keep those things in mind. All right, guys, if you have any questions about this fight in particular or Frosty or Unholy DK or Frost DK, I suppose, leave them in the comment section below. And I also have both my Frost and Unholy guides updated along with the written guides. Again, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.